this is how I play the game! Oh, these freaking allergies, man. Uh, I will be playing on the PS4 pad, so more than likely I'm going to suck at it. But then again, I haven't played Marvel vs. Capcom 3 since it was released. I mean, we're talking years, so I don't even remember, me, you know, a lot of the things about the system of the damn game. So, it's going to be a lot of learning, that's for sure, a lot of learning curve. But at least it'll be cool to see the game in action and see exactly what the game is about, okay? Certainly don't expect giant expert level combos or anything like that. That's not the purpose of me trying out the demo today, either. Fighter 2. Uh, so I played last night a ton of matches. And I, I won the vast majority of them. In fact, I think I only lost like three matches. Um, in particular, I remember there was one match. I, the stupid Joy-Con refused to block down. Like, it would only do standing block. The joystick was malfunctioning and not even blocking low. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Um, but hey, when you're playing on a freaking Joy-Con, it's, it's obviously not a serious controller. Um, for this kind of game, so I'm certainly not surprised that it wasn't the perfect control scheme for this kind of game, right? Now, some people have asked me, Phil, are you going to buy the Pro Controller for the Nintendo Switch? Um, if you're not aware, the Pro Controller for the Nintendo Switch costs 70, that's 7-0, okay, US dollars. That's in fucking sane and it's obvious Nintendo is ripping off the consumer on purpose. There's nothing in that Pro Controller worth $70. I've bought fucking giant joysticks for like $80. So to sell a little gamepad for $70 is r really just ripping off the Nintendo fans, and it's really a joke, and it's messed up. Um, that's like 95% profit margin for Nintendo when you buy one of those Pro Controllers. And I'll be honest here, I don't have a lot of money to go around. So for me to go blow $70 on a controller for, you know, for what? I don't know, because the thing is, outside of Street Fighter, right... What other game really is going to utilize the Pro Controller coming up? Um, I don't know. Like, it seems like all the other games would be, with the Joy-Con, would actually probably work pretty well. So, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Uh, but right now, I'm playing on the Joy-Con, and I'm doing as good as I can. All right? So, I won a ton. I had a ton of wins and only three losses. Today, I'll be playing more. We'll see how I do. But keep in mind, this is the game that I was a tournament-level player at. I was actually good. I was a pro. I won tournaments in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which is what Ultra Street Fighter 2 actually is. So... Um, yeah, this should be a fun stream. First, the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite demo, and then we're switching over to Ultra Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Friday is supposedly the release of ARMS for the Switch, which is obviously one of the first-party major titles for the Switch, and people are saying that I should cover it, but I'm kind of on the f fence, and the reason I say that is because, uh, I'm scratching my head here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover it. Because I know that all the videos I put on YouTube are going to get claimed. I just know they are right away. There's a first-party title, and all those first-party titles, the videos get claimed, no matter what. Um, so, uh, you know... Can I go days covering a new game and not make any money? Yeah, and I know that for the common viewer, you're like, I don't care about that, Phil. Play it and have fun. I know, if only that were real life, and I could just do whatever I wanted and never have to worry about finances or bills ever again, I would, trust me. Uh, if I were one of these big YouTubers getting hundreds of thousands of views on every video, if I were a streamer who had 5,000 subs, um, you know, then I could have that kind of flexibility. Sadly, I'm not there, okay? And I have to basically, uh, you know, weigh and balance these things. And I, I, am I interested in ARMS? Absolutely. I am absolutely excited, uh, for ARMS. People are saying it's gonna be one of the big first-party releases for the Switch this year, but... If I'm going to cover ARMS, basically, just so you know, the buy-in that I would need from you guys is not only would I need you to be here for the live streams, but I would definitely need you to cheer, to sub, and to tip during those streams. Because if I'm making zero on the videos on YouTube, I need to make up for it here on Twitch. You know what I mean? So I guess we're going to see how it goes. Again, I don't want to promise you anything. The other thing that really frustrates me, I'm going to be honest here, Nintendo is so fucking stupid and outdated. They don't even allow you to pay for games with PayPal. They make you pay with a credit card no matter what. And, you know, I get tips and stuff, and I have PayPal funds that I can easily buy all my games with. In fact, that's what I've been doing this year. All the games on PSN, on Xbox Live, I've been using PayPal. 
to buy everything, and now they're telling me I need to charge stuff to a fucking credit card, which I don't want to do. That's frustrating, too. Even though that's just a little nitpicky, it's still frustrating to see how outdated Nintendo is that they don't even understand PayPal is one of the major ways people pay for stuff now. Yeah, um, we'll see. I, 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 I'm certainly not eliminating ARMS as a possibility for Friday, and I am excited to check it out. I just don't want to promise everyone that, and it doesn't work out. I don't know. I gotta think about it. I gotta think about taking this risk, okay? Because it is. It's a huge risk for me. Um, I need to keep, obviously, I want to keep doing this. I want to keep broadcasting every day. I want to keep putting videos out for you guys and gals. Um, but I need to be able to pay my bills, you know? That's kind of a concern. So, I have a few contacts now who know the ways around stuff. And basically, they told me that I could easily get into E3 and cover it from the inside again. And that I could get exclusive captured footage of these games and stuff. Um... But for me, that would be a major expense to fly, you know, to California and do all that. So I'm on the fence about if I, sh if I should ever consider going to E3 again or not. Even though I know I have the, the means to do it now, um, I don't know if I would want to because it's going to be so, so much of an expense for me to do it. Um, but we'll see. I, en I do enjoy, regardless, I enjoy covering it from home um, because it pretty much is pretty easy to do. You just watch their stuff and you can talk about it. And when I went to E3 in 2012... Um, I basically, yes, I got to see some hands-on stuff, but it wasn't, like, so much different from covering it from home regardless. Um, so, so that's why I like covering E3 in the way that I do. So thanks, everyone, for watching the E3 coverage stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. And finally, I hope that you will check out my podcast on Thursday, which will kind of be the summary and the rundown of everything at E3. That'll be kind of the, the final conclusion of my, my coverage, okay? Wow, that was an amazing once-in-a-lifetime thing! I'll never do that again! <laughs> Alright, I'm not dead, but I swear to God I wish I fucking was.